Welcome back. In today's video, I am going to go through how to get your document set up for printers. It's one of those really important things that you need to know how to do, even if it's just for yourself, and especially if you are working with a client that is having something printed. So this is from a previous video. I'm just going to go over how to get this one ready for print. I've already got it somewhat started from that previous video because I have the bleed added on. So I'm just going to go through really quickly how to get to this point of the document. So you will be creating something new. I like to change the type to print press ready. And then I want to change mine to inches because I work in inches. And I'm just going to go ahead and change this to five by seven. If you are printing anything, and it's really important to have your DPI at 300. And the last thing that you need to do is to select the color format that you need for your document to be printed. You may want to check with the printer ahead of time. Most of the time, if it's going to be printed, they do like CMYK, but I've noticed with a few of the print on demand sites, they actually prefer it in RGB. Um, with digital printing, you can do it that way. But if you're going through a place like moo.com uh, or um, got print, any of those where you can kind of upload everything online, most of the time they will have a template and they'll tell you exactly which color format they would like. And just another note on choosing colors. If you have a printer at home, it is nice to print as you are designing so you can get an idea of what the color will print like. Just know that the colors on your screen are going to be brighter than what is printed out. If you do want to get a good idea without printing of what the color will look like, I recommend buying a Pantone color book. Um, they can be expensive, but they do show what it will look like printed. I have the Pantone Color Bridge coded color book, and I do use the coded because most of the time, I would say 99% of the time when I'm printing something or having something printed for a client, it is on paper that is coded. And your colors will look different on coded and uncoated paper because the uncoated paper soaks up more ink than coded. And while I'm on that topic, if you want to get to a color palette that shows Pantone colors, if you go to swatches, click under recent, you will see all of the Pantone color options. Like I said, I have color bridge coded and you can see all of the Pantone colors. I know a lot of people do like to work in Pantones because it's the universal color system. But to get your bleeds onto the document, this is the way that I have found is the easiest in Affinity Designer. I hit Command R to get the ruler, and you can click on the ruler and bring down to your document and just make a guide at each one of the edges of your artboard. You could also go to View and show rulers. And you can also, if you don't see guides after the next step, you can also go to view and show guides. So next thing you need to do, document setup. And this is where you need to change the dimensions of your artwork. In the US, the typical bleed side on each side is an eighth of an inch. So to make it so that both sides have the bleed, you just need to add 0.25 onto each one of these. Now, if you are elsewhere in the world and you are using millimeters, from what I have read, a lot of documents, the bleed size is three millimeters, some up to five, and then depending on larger documents, it could be even up to 10 or 15. So I would talk to your printer if you're not sure. And just click OK. And as you can see, you now have a bleed on your document. Bleeds are really important. So where these guides are is 
ideally where they're going to cut. So they're not always perfectly online with where they should be cutting. So this makes sure that there's no white edge on your document or on the file after it's printed. And it's also important not to have anything important, especially text, too close to these edges because sometimes they can cut within your design. So now that we have that, I'm just going to X off of that. Don't need to save it. You actually could save it as a template, which I have already done. So as you can see, the blade is here. There's nothing too close to that edge. I'm not worried about anything getting chopped off. There is a lot of text in this file, and I can guarantee you it is not a font that most people have, and that is a big problem when it comes to printing because a printer could open this file and it is going to revert back to a system font, and you don't want that to happen. What I'm actually going to do is I want to select all of the fonts in the file. I'm just going to go ahead and group it I know that seems like an odd thing to do, but then I want to copy and paste. So command C, command V, and then I want to turn off that bottom layer. And the reason why this is really important is because even after something is print ready and your client has let you know that it's print ready, there can be changes. Most often there will be changes. So it's nice to have a file that you can still go back to and edit and you haven't completely lost all the time that you've put into that document. So now with the visible layer selected, I'm just going to ungroup everything, right click and ungroup, select your font and go to layer, convert to curves. So what that has done is it has just turned this from an editable text space into each one of these letters are individual shapes now. It's done exactly what it said. It's converted it to curves. So you just need to go through and do that for each one of the spaces. So now that that is done, you need to move on to make sure that any of your spots, like these are already, pretty much everything has already been converted to curves, even all of those little kind of squiggles. It's not necessary to convert all of those to curves. I just like to do it for myself. So since we don't have anything that needs to be converted, I'm, for example, I'm going to show you, I'm just going to select a brush. I'm just going to put something into the background with that selected. If you have anything with a brush or pen stroke and that you do want to convert, all you have to do is that same exact process you did for your text. So go up to layer and go to expand stroke instead of convert to curves. Okay, so now everything is good to go. The way that I like to save this is go to export and PDF. Most printers that I have worked with prefer to have things as a PDF. Make sure it is DPI at 300 and not 72. And that is good to send to your client or to your printer. Um, it's also good to know that some clients do like to have the file, or in this case, the affinity file, along with font files, although most of the time they are fine with just the PDF. So I hope you enjoyed today's video, and as always, don't forget to hit like and subscribe. Thanks, guys!